Hello, my name is Mark Payne. I'm from the Technical University of Denmark here in Copenhagen. I'm going to be talking to you today about the work that we've been doing in the CIS Biodiversity Project, um, and in particular, the work that we've been doing to develop ways to incorporate climate data into the management of more of the marine, marine environment and marine ecosystems. And I'm sure that we're all familiar with the effects of climate change on terrestrial uh, ecosystems. We've seen many examples of that today already. Um, but we don't think so naturally about what climate change will, will mean for the ocean. In fact, the impacts of climate change on the ocean will actually be just as severe. We can expect to see, for example, substantial shifts in the distribution of species of where they're found, for example. We already have many examples of that uh, taking place around the world. Even under the most ambitious and optimistic, optimistic uh, climate scenario where we completely achieve the Paris Agreement goals. We can still expect to see a loss of all tropical coral uh, reefs around the world. And for many charismatic species such as puffins, and polar bears, seals and whales, the effects of climate change will present new and severe challenges for their ability to survive in a changing environment. And these effects of climate change on the ocean and on life in the ocean will also have consequences for the human societies, individuals and businesses that actually depend on the ocean. And this can have consequences in terms of, of food securities and through fishing and the uh, food that we eat. It can have consequences for our infrastructure and our communities that live near the coast and for all of those businesses that depend on the ocean for income through tourism, for example. And so it's therefore clear that a, a thorough understanding of the effects of climate change on the ocean and what it means for life in the ocean is therefore necessary to managing and mitigating and minimizing its impacts on the humans that depend on the ocean. When we're talking about management in the European context, management of the ocean uh, is centered around an organization called ICES, the International Council for the Exploration of the Seas. And this is a body that brings together a network of around 6,000 scientific experts from 700 institutes and organizations in 60 countries, primarily in Europe, but also globally. And within the context of ICES, uh, people work together to generate state-of-the-art state advice and science to support the conservation, management, and sustainability goals in the ocean. And it's important to point out that ICES doesn't, isn't actually responsible for the management of the ocean. It generates advice that supports the management. The actual management decisions are made by a variety of management bodies throughout Europe, primarily the European Commission, but also other bodies such as the OSPAR, the Oslo Paris Commission, the Northeast Atlantic Fisheries Commission, um, the North Atlantic Salmon Commission, the Helcom uh, Helsinki Commission, in the Baltic and governments of, of Norway and in the future we also expect the United Kingdom to take advice directly from ICES. ICES products and its advice take two different forms, it takes a number of different forms but I'm going to focus on two here today. First is advice that's given at the ecosystem level and this is given through a, a document or a product called an ecosystem overview and there are 12 of these covering the Northeast Atlantic, as you can see here on the map. The second form of the advice is in terms of population specific advice, so for a species in a given area. And ICES gives advice on the fishing opportunities for around up to 250 fish populations in the Northeast Atlantic. And so when you hear in the media, for example, that scientists recommend a, a fish quota of, for example, 10,000 10, tons on cod in the Baltic, uh, this is exactly where it's coming from. Within the scope of the CIS Biodiversity Project, we've been working to develop uh, pipelines and applications that can be used to support the generation of these advice products and to incorporate climate information directly into their, uh, their delivery. So and I'm going to go through each of these in turn. The first of these is the ecosystem overview. And you can see an example of this appearing on the right hand side. This is a relatively concise and compact document that sum, summarizes the human activities, the pressures that they generate, 
and the influences on the ecosystem states for a given ecoregion. And the example that I have here is for the Greater North Sea. Uh, and the result of these ecosystem overviews is, is generally summarized in terms of this particular figure here. Uh, we can see the pressures that the ecosystem is exposed to running down the middle. And so some examples of, in the North Sea are the extraction of species such as, as fishing, abrasion, bottom abrasion due, due to bottom trawling, loss of substrate and habitat as a result, the extraction of resources such as oil and gas and gravel, and particularly for seabirds and marine mammals, uh, death by ship strike uh, is a major issue, uh, as is marine litter and underwater noise. And so these are the major issues that ICES views as, as being important in the Greater North Sea. But the thing to note is that there's actually not any climate here, even though this is widely recognized as being an important pressure and stressor on uh, all marine ecosystems. And so this is, um, historically, these ecosystem overviews have not incorporated uh, any form of climate information. But that's also something that's, that's being recognized now and is starting to change. And we've been very fortunate with the timing of the CIS Biodiversity Project that we've been able to actually um, essentially satisfy the needs for climate information um, in these ecosystem overviews. So we've been working with ICES to develop an application that can do just that. Um, an example of the application is shown here on the next slide. We have some screenshots taken directly from the web page. So the first uh, figure here shows uh, a map of the average current sea surface temperatures um, in the, the greater North Atlantic region um, based on, on historical experiments. And then of course we can take this and run it forward in time to project the effects of climate change under, in this case, a high emission scenario at the end of the century. And if we look, focus in on the North Sea region here, in the red circles, we can see that there's actually a substantial difference um, in the sea surface temperatures between these um, two different periods. And so we can actually do this as a time series, as you like, which you can see on the right-hand side. The horizontal axis, we have time covering both the past and the projected future. The vertical axis is the sea surface temperature. And we can see that there's, we expect to see a substantial amount of warming in the future, um, up to three and a half degrees in the average temperature. Um, although under a high emission scenario, although under a moderate emission scenario, this is approximately halved. And so we've been working together with ICES and the developers of the ecosystem overviews uh, to actually to figure out how we can incorporate this information directly into those advice products and therefore influence the management of these ecosystems. And this is an ongoing process and we hope to see the first products, um, ecosystem overview products that incorporate this climate data appearing early in 2021. The second example is the advice that's given uh, by ICES for single species and single populations. And to give you an example, we can take Atlantic cod um, we have a picture of an Atlantic cod here sitting in its, its natural habitat, although many of us will be more familiar with it in this particular form, uh, where it's the, the main ingredient of, in fish and chips, of course, uh, but also it's a, a common eating fish that's used in, in many dishes throughout Europe. ICES gives advice on the catch opportunities for Atlantic cod, amongst other species. We have an example of what that advice looks like here on the right-hand side, in this case for the North Sea. Um, and although there's a lot of information presented about the sustainability and what sustainable catches are on this uh, particular fish stock, again, climate information is actually not incorporated into this advice. So we've been, again, working with ICES to generate and to develop a way where climate information can be readily generated for this particular um, fish stock and therefore incorporated into the uh, advice sheet. The, uh, we've been doing this through the, the CIS Biodiversity app, and you can see some examples of the outputs for Atlantic cod in the North Sea here. Uh, the figure that we have here at the top is the current habitat suitability. And this is based on a ecological niche model or a habitat suitability model that looks at the appropriateness of the temperature for cod in this region. 
And you can see that at the moment, under current conditions, all of the North Sea is suitable habitat. And this, of course, makes sense because we know that there are cod current in the North Sea. But when we run this into the future under a high emission scenario at the end of the century, uh, we, can we see substantial changes taking place. And it's particularly in this region here that I've circled in red in the Southern North Sea that the most worrying and the largest changes take place. This is also the region where you see the, um, the, some of the largest subpopulations of cod occurring. So this suggests that thermal conditions in the North Sea by the end of the century will become unsuitable uh, for some parts of the cod population. And so again, we can look at this in terms of a time series, look at going out to the future, where on the vertical axis, we have the proportion of the North Sea that's suitable habitat. And we can see that under a, a moderate emission scenario, there's a much a substantially reduced change in uh, substantially reduced loss of habitat um, compared to a high emission scenario, the RCP 8.5 scenario. So again, this is uh, something that can be used to inform future decision, make, decision making about the future management of the stock. Um, and we are working with ICES to figure out exactly how this can be incorporated into the advice sheet and used as the basis for decision making. So to sum up and round off, um, I've, uh, in this presentation, I've been talking about the CIS Biodiversity Project, and in particular, our marine use case study. And what we've done is that we've developed a, a system where we can generate and provide relevant climate data that's useful at both the ecosystem level and at the level of individual fish populations. And this data is being used and we hope will continue to be used in the future to support the sustainable development of living marine resources and ecosystems in European waters. And in particular, we're working with the users and with the ICES community, uh, both in terms of optimizing this, this uh, product uh, and in particular aiding in the interpretation of this data uh, so that everybody can get the best out of these, uh, these particular products. So with that, um, I'll round off. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me. My contact details are here, either as an email or my Twitter handle. And otherwise, I thank you for your attention. <laughs>